dream. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm-mm. Nope. 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 Before you lose your mind, I'm not going to be painting my forks because they're completely fine, but the forks that I'm going to be doing today are my dad's fork. As you can see, over time they have uh, corroded up a little bit from bugs and stuff. So I'm going to clean these up and I'm going to redo these in black to match the speedometer that I did in black. It's going to look really nice, but before I do that I have to go get more spray paint and more sandpaper because I don't have any. I just Oh my gosh, this song is my jam! You're not gonna want to see this. So here's what I got. Got a package of three stage sandpaper for my sanding mouse, 80 all the way up to 220. I have 400 grit sandpaper to blend all that back down so there's no lines in the final product. Masking tape so it doesn't get everywhere. And satin black Krylon Color Master color and primer in one. It's my favorite stuff to use. Rust-Oleum seems to drip and run more. I like this stuff better. So let's get to painting. Before I actually get started working on this, sanding it down and repainting it, I want to show you why I'm doing it just in case you didn't see what is wrong with these four tubes at the beginning of the video. I want to give you up close and show you the before. That way when you see what I've done afterwards, it'll, it'll make it look like I'm a little better than probably what I am. First things I'm going to do is I'm going to mask off this uh, the piston actually up here so I don't mar it up with sand paper on accident and make sure that this uh, seal is also covered up or the dust swiper thingy is all covered up so I don't um, tear that up with the sandpaper either. And then I'm going to take this front fender off so when I'm sanding I don't mess up the paint on that or get overspray on it or, or whatever other thing that I could figure out to do with it. So. Next step's obviously gonna be to sand. Whenever you sand, you wanna start with the heaviest grit that you have. So I'm gonna start with 80 and see how that removes the oxidation. Then I'm gonna move up to 120, 300, and then 400 for the final before I go ahead and lay down the paint. That should give me a smooth, nice look. And whenever you do paint, you always wanna step it like that or else you're gonna get lines and swirls in the final product. And you know what?
Next up, I'm gonna jump straight to the 220 because this is looking pretty good and it's actually not as marred up as I figured it would be with the 80 grit. So I'm jumping straight to the 220 and we're gonna sand some more. All right, so here's where we stand so far just after going through a 220. It's getting pretty smooth. It's cleaning up nicely. There's a couple spots that I need to work through still like right here. You can still see that it's shiny. You don't want that. You want it all to be pretty much a uniform look like it is on the outside here. If you see any shiny spots, make sure you go back over that with your sandpaper before you lay down spray. But I'm going to go ahead and touch up those few spots and then I'm going to move to my 400 grit sandpaper. As soon as I get down with my 400 grit sandpaper, I can start masking and then lay down my satin black spray onto the fork tubes. Okay, so I just finished up sanding and you can see how they look. They're looking pretty uniform and pretty good. Before I go ahead and mask it off to paint it, you want to make sure you take a rag or if you have an air compressor where you can blow it off, something to be sure you have all of the little dust particles off from sanding or else when you start to spray, you're going to have all those dust particles blow into your paint and it's going to look really, really bad when it's finished and when it's dry. So make sure you get all of those little dust particles off from sanding before you paint, please. If you don't do it after I just told you to do it and you paint something after sanding and you didn't clean it and it looks like junk, it's on you buddy. The last thing I have to do before I can actually spray is obviously I gotta mask it off so it doesn't get all over the place. That's the biggest thing that you have to do really right, really right, really right. Is that even like, forget it. That's something that you have to do really correctly. You don't wanna know what? Just do it right, okay? If you're not taking off the parts that you're spraying, you need to make sure you wrap up all of these little crevices and get it just right. Like especially down in here and down in here and down in here. The spaces that are really tight and hard to get to, you gotta mask them off really tight to the piece that you don't want to have color on it. That way you can get back there and have color that you are spraying back here and it look correct without getting it all over the place. So I'm gonna really take my time here, making sure that all of the areas that I don't want sprayed are masked off good. And then uh, after that, it's the easy part. So let's get to masking. All right, got it all masked up really nice and good. Got everything covered all the way down to the, uh, uh, the air cooler. I got all the forks covered. Up top, I have all the gauges and all that junk covered. The whole wheel's covered. Everything is covered that needs to be covered. So, now that's all, now the only thing left to do is, well, spray it. Coat one, ooh, that's really close. Coat one is complete. I do like to do multiple coats, uh, especially when the, um, when the pieces that I'm spraying are vertical like this. Otherwise, you'll get run marks and stuff. So I'll do a couple light coats and make sure everything's covered nice. Gosh, dude, you should really put on a mask. It's bad to breathe that stuff. Well, shut up, man, I'm holding my breath. Okay, I got plenty of coats on it. Now the only thing left to do is just let it sit and dry on both sides. You don't wanna take all the masking off before it's dry because you run the risk of rubbing it against it and messing up the finish. So all that's left to do now is wait. And what better way to wait than A nice cold brew. I can't think of one. All right, so that wraps it up for this quick little, well, not really quick, but uh, this little project that I did on my dad's bike. Overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, uh, but why don't you go ahead and take a look at this B-roll and see for yourself.
Ugh. So let me know down in the comments below what you think. Did I do a decent job or is there some kind of suggestion that you can give me for the next time I do some paint work? I think I got a pretty good handle on it, but I don't claim to be an expert. If you have any questions about certain paint work uh, that I might be able to help you out with, I'll definitely do my best, but you're probably better off just Google searching it because Google knows all and I do, I, I know most, but Google knows all. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, this little vloggy video of me working on my dad's bike. Keep in mind that it is like a 12 year old bike. It's a 2006. So there are things wrong with it. And that's the reason I'm trying to put some little nice touches on it, make it look a little better for its age. And I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And like I always say, don't dream it, just live it. Catch y'all in the next one.